When a student breaks a bone, they have a doctor to turn to, but when they suffer a concussion, you may be their best resource. Students who have sustained concussions might return to school with persistent, invisible symptoms. A concussion can make a person have physical symptoms, like headaches and sensitivity to noise and light, cognitive symptoms, like trouble remembering things and learning new material, and sleep symptoms, like difficulty falling asleep or sleeping a lot more than usual. These symptoms show that the brain's neurochemicals are out of balance while it's in the process of healing. Students can also be affected by emotional, social, and behavioral symptoms, which often go unrecognized and untreated. After a concussion, a person might feel anxious, sad, or moody. She might isolate herself from friends or feel lonely. People might say that their loved one just doesn't feel like himself. He's kind of hard to be around. This is likely a result of both physical and situational variables. The brain is working hard to recover, which can make a person feel irritable and stressed. Students also might be struggling to keep up in class or dealing with restrictions on things like sports, driving, and technology. We talked with students who had sustained concussions, and they told us the things that were most helpful and how school psychologists and school counselors could help. Help us find other things to do, things that don't involve a lot of physical activity, mental strain, bright lights, or loud noises. For example, let me continue participating in team activities like keeping score and being on the sidelines. This will let me be around my friends and stay connected to my sport. Help our teachers, parents, doctors, and coaches talk with each other about our symptoms and recovery plan. Teach us coping strategies like deep breathing, positive thoughts, and relaxation. Provide a quiet place we can go and a person we feel comfortable talking to during the school day when we feel overwhelmed. Help us identify and reduce stressors like unnecessary work and pressure from teammates. This is Sarah. This is her second concussion in two years. She missed a week of school and struggled to keep up with her AP classes when she returned. The team working with Sarah did lots of good things. Her teachers gave appropriate accommodations like rest breaks modified assignments, and class notes. Her athletic trainer monitored her symptoms and followed a return to play protocol. Sarah's parents monitored her at home to make sure she wasn't getting too much cognitive or physical exertion. But Sarah was still depressed, anxious, and lonely. She took a lot of these feelings out on her friends and family. When it came time for junior prom, Sarah's parents were concerned about the loud music, the strobe lights, the exertion from dancing, and the lack of sleep that comes with after prom. Recognizing the possible social and emotional stress of not attending this milestone event, the school psychologist helps Sarah and her parents develop a plan that involved dressing up, going to dinner with friends, attending the dance for a short period of time, and attending the traditional morning after breakfast. It's important that school professionals recognize that concussions aren't just an athletic issue. Did you know that a leading cause of concussions in kids is bicycle riding? Children sustain concussions in all kinds of ways, including everyday play, falls, vehicle accidents, and abuse. Because a concussion is an invisible injury, it's harder to tell how to accommodate their needs. It helps when a trained team, including teachers, school psychologists, and counselors, school nurses, administrators, physicians, and athletic personnel if it's a student athlete, can work together with students and parents to help children with concussions return to school and play safely.